In this session, we are going to look at how we can use Formit to model 3D buildings for use in InfraWorks. Let me mention that this session represents part one of a three-part series. Now, the goal here in part one is to model the overall mass of an existing building. First, we'll talk about the building. As you can see, I'm starting out in InfraWorks. This model represents a site plan for a proposed fast food restaurant. Just adjacent to my proposed site is an existing car wash. I would like to include this building in my InfraWorks environment to add more realism to my visualizations. So let's talk about dimensions. If I don't have surveyed information for this building, I can estimate many of the dimensions that I need. I say estimate because I don't need to create a perfect representation of the building. I just want to model something that spatially looks very similar. If I open the InfraWorks menu and come down to Analyze, I can choose point-to-point -point distance to identify and approximate the overall footprint for this building. In this case, we'll say the building is 140 feet long by 32 feet wide. Just for a second, I'm going to open up Google Earth. Using Google Earth Street View, I can estimate many of the heights associated with this building. Now, in my case, this project site was also flown using a drone, and a point cloud was created from the imagery. Over here in Recap, we can see the point cloud. From here, I can use the distance tools to approximate even more of the existing dimensions. Let me press escape a couple times to get out. Once I have my dimensions, I'll jump over to form it where I will create the 3D model of this building. I'm going to start by holding down the right mouse button to orbit, and then I will hold down the middle mouse button to pan. We'll start our model by creating the overall footprint. I'm going to do that by coming up to the draw menu, and then I will choose the rectangle option. As I move my cursor around, you can see how it's snapping to this grid. Now, if you don't want it to do that, you can click the settings button and we can turn off snap to grid right here. I'm going to keep mine on for right now. Let me also mention if we come up to units that we are working in imperial measurements. If you want to work in metric, you could set that here as well. I'm going to click the settings button to close that. And then I will create a rectangle. Let me click to start. And this is 32 feet wide. I can find that measurement by dragging this over until I snap to 32. I will then click and then I will drag over to the right. Now I don't have to do my measurements by snapping, I can also enter them at the keyboard. If I tap the tab key, I can then type 140 and I'll press enter. Notice that I didn't have to put the apostrophe in there. Any value that I enter in that dialog box, it will assume represents feet. Let me zoom out and I'll press escape. We'll orbit this up a little bit. So there's my footprint. Next, I'd like to create the elevated part of the building over here. This is a 32 foot by 32 foot square, so I would like to offset this edge. Let me roll the wheel forward to zoom in. When we work in Formit, we are selecting and editing faces, edges, or vertices. In this case, I want to modify an edge, so I will click to select it, and then I'll right click to bring up a contextual menu. You can see we have several commands here. If I hover, it will tell me what each of these does. I'm going to use the offset option in this case. Now, when we offset and form it, we are offsetting to both sides. Not a problem. Let's press tab. I'm going to offset this 32 feet, and I'll press enter. I will then press escape a couple times to get out of the command. Let me roll the wheel back to zoom out. To eliminate this geometry that I don't need, I'm going to do it much like I do in AutoCAD. I'm going to click and hold, and I will drag to create a crossing window. I'll press delete, and we'll get rid of this last one too. I'll select it, and I'll press delete. Let's zoom out, and I'll pan this over. Next, I'm going to do some extrusions. Based on my measurements, I know that this area has a height of 21 feet. To extrude this out, I'm going to select the face, and then I will click again, and I'll pull up, and I'll type tab 21, enter. I will then click to select this face. I'll click it again and pull up. This part of the building has a height of 14 feet. Let me press escape a couple times to get out. We'll orbit this around. Next, I'd like to create the eave that's underneath the pyramid-shaped roof that we have here. I'm going to do that by offsetting this face. I'll start by selecting the face, and then I will right-click, and in the contextual menu, I will choose Offset. You can see that I can offset this in or out. I'm going to pull out. I'll type Tab, One Foot, Enter, and then I'll press Escape. Right here, you can see the new face that we have. Now, the other one is still selected. I'm going to hold my Shift key and click to select both faces. And when they're both selected, I will click and I'll pull this up a height of one foot. Let's zoom out and I'll orbit this around. Next, we'll create the pyramid shape. I'm going to do that by going to the Draw Tools and I'll create a line. I'm going to snap to this corner and then I will snap to the opposite corner. When I'm finished, I'll press the space bar or the Escape key to get out of the command. Once again, we'll draw another line. You can see the tools are very similar to what we have in AutoCAD. We'll go corner to corner. I'll tap my spacebar, and then I can pull this up to create a pyramid. 
Once again, when working in Formit, we are editing faces, edges, or vertices. I'm going to select this vertex. I will then click again and I'll pull this up. I'm going to hold the right mouse button down to orbit this a little bit. I'm going to pull this up a height of eight feet. I will then press escape a couple times when finished. Let's swing this around. I'll zoom out and we'll pan it over. Finally, I'd like to create a parapet wall around this edge. I'm going to do it by offsetting this top face. Let me click to select it. I will then right click and I'll choose offset from the menu. I'm going to offset this in 1.5 feet. I'll press escape. Now I do not need this edge, so I'm going to click to select it and I'll just press delete to take that out. I would then like to extend these lines to meet this edge. That's going to be a vertex edit. Let me click to select the vertex here at the end. I will then click again and I'll pull that over to meet this face. I'll press escape a couple times to get out of the command. Let's come over to the other side. I'll click this vertex. I will then click it again and then I'll project it over to meet the same edge. Let's zoom out. This gives me a new face. I can now click on this face to select it, click again, and I can push this down 1.5 feet. Let me press escape to get out of the command. One more accoutrement I'd like to add. There's kind of a lip around this edge that's about two feet tall. I'm going to start by offsetting this face. I'll do it by selecting the face and then I'll right click and I'll choose offset. Let's offset it six inches. Enter. There we go. I have a new face. Let me press escape. The first face is still selected. I'm going to hold my shift key and grab the new face that I just made. When they're both selected, I will click again and then I will pull these up a height of two feet. Let me press escape when finished. That looks good. Now, if I wanted to get real picky, I could spin this building around. And if we look tucked up under here, you can see I have an unnecessary face. To remove it, I'll click to select the face. I will then click it again and I'll pull it down to meet the top of the roof. When I'm finished, I'll press escape. Let's zoom out. We'll orbit this around and then I will center this on screen. Now that we're finished creating the overall mass of the building, we are ready to add some of the decorations like doors and windows. And we'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.